grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our Old Testament reading, and I read just the last verse of that one more time. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. This is our text. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit and move us that we too would be fully committed to the cause that you have given us, the cause that you have placed on us by our calling into faith and by the gift of salvation you have bestowed on us. Help us. Help us with great joy, with great zeal, with great excitement to commit ourselves to the cause, but also that you would be with us in the midst of it, to hold us up, to strengthen us, to dispel our fears, that we can boldly and confidently and faithfully carry out that cause to your glory and your name. Amen. So, did you come up with an answer? Why would the Christians in Afghanistan want to stay? Randy. Exactly. Exactly right. You know, that's the thing. Those Christians that are desiring to stay, we might think, you know, kind of in a worldly way and say, well, that's their home or they've got family there, or we might even think, well, you know, they've got lots of other friends there, but Randy hit it right on the head. If they leave, who proclaims the gospel there? If they leave, who brings that message of salvation, the only way of salvation to the people there? And that's what they're thinking. And so that's what they are willing to do to bring that gospel message. They are willing to suffer and quite possibly, probably, even die to stay and share their faith. Uh, I want to share a video with you. This is from the Voice of the Martyrs, and uh, the Na International Day of Prayer is coming up in November. And this is a, a historical beginning of the voice of the martyrs. And so, Ben, when you're ready. In 1940, Nazi forces invaded Richard and Sabina Wormbrand's home country, Romania. There were no safe spaces for Jews. And though Christian, Richard and Sabina were ethnic Jews. Are you afraid? Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Genesis 26. Do not be afraid of them. Joshua 8. I am. I'm kind of afraid. They are asking to see IDs. All our lives remain in our Jews only. Christian, really? Show me better, which party you got, right? Go to the other side, I know you're going to be here. You can't forget, but there's no need to be here. You should get out if you still can. Your 
run away? If we stay, I'll follow the others into prison. It will be the end of our life together. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. We believe this or we don't. Richard and Sabina, like many Christians during World War II, had a choice. Lay low and hope the worst passed them by or get involved and be the hands and feet of Christ. All at great personal risk. I think we have to stay. We have a job to do. If they are coming, then they are coming. Let's not think of them as enemies to be feared, but rather as a mission. Like Sabina and Richard Wormbrand, today's persecuted Christians, living in hostile areas and restricted nations are bold witnesses for Christ. Choosing to give up their comfort and safety in this world in order to find a life that counts for eternity. The first request from our persecuted Christian brothers and sisters is, will you pray for me? As we pray for them to endure opposition in order to advance the gospel, may we be inspired by their example to pay any price necessary in obedience to Christ. The reason I wanted to share that with you today is it goes right along with what we hear in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 11, we hear uh, Jeremiah's words about the threat that God reveals to him. So, in verse 18, The Lord made it known to me, and I knew then you showed me their deeds. There's a group of men that were planning to assassinate Jeremiah for the fact that he was proclaiming a message they didn't want to hear. Proclaiming a message that they viewed as a threat to them and therefore wanted to shut him up by ending his life. And so Jeremiah calls out to God, thanking him for revealing it and saying this in verse 19, But I was a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know. It was against me they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Next slide. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. See, he knew that even though his life was in danger, he knew that even though he was being threatened, that God was with him. And that even though he was in serious danger, he was going to be faithful to the cause, faithful to God's cause, of delivering the message that God sent him to deliver. You know, a lot of times when we think about persecution, we're thinking about persecution in a way that, well, that's happening there. That's happening in Afghanistan. That's happening in China. That's happening in North Korea. That's happening in India. That's happening in Iran. That's happening somewhere else. 
Christian pastors are jailed in Canada because their churches were open during COVID. Canada. I want you to hear that because that's not far away. Especially for us in Wisconsin. I want you to hear that because it's getting closer. It's just a matter of time. See, the Christians in the places that I mentioned are persecuted. Why? Because the people living there want to live under a worldview that's different from Christianity. They want to live under a, a faith system or a belief system that says Buddha is important, Hinduism is important, Islam is important, and Christianity is nothing. And so when a Christian proclaims Christ in those areas, their life is in danger and a lot of times comes to an end because of their faith. Think about what Jesus said in John chapter 14. Say it with me if you know the words. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, those who are not Christians don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear that Christianity is the only way. They don't want to hear that Christianity is the sole way of salvation. And it angers them. And when someone's angry, it leads to violence, hatred, and maybe even death. It's growing here in the United States because while it might not be another religion, so to speak, that's the threat. Lifestyles and lifestyle choices in our nation are growing and that speaks directly against what we believe. And so we're a threat to them. We're a threat because what we believe is strongly and adversely against what they believe. And so the threat for us is growing. I want you, as we're thinking about this, they still need to hear the gospel. They still need to hear God loves them. They still need to hear the message of salvation. They still need to hear that there's only one way. They still need to hear that. Um, Mary and I had planned to go to New Orleans last week, but God said, um, no, you're not going. And so uh, we, are, uh, we planned, said, oh, well, let's just go to Wisconsin Dells instead. And so when we went, we got a, a packet with our registration that had all kinds of flyers for things to do in the Dells. And of course, one of those flyers, or actually several of them, were for escape rooms. Now, how many of you know what an escape room is? Okay, so quite a, quite a few. Of course, in an escape room, you go in there and you're locked in and you cannot get out until you figure out the clues and you come up with uh, the puzzles and you find that one last clue that opens the door. There's only one way out. The ultimate escape word is Jesus. Jesus. It's that simple. And we are the ones that need to show them all the clues that need to speak that name of Jesus to help them find their way out, to help them find their freedom. You see, everyone who doesn't believe, God has told us this, everyone who does not believe is going to be subject to God's wrath, subject to God's punishment against sin. That's what hell is. God's wrath and punishment against sin. But praise the Lord that he had a desire to intervene for us. See, and that's what the cross is. Jesus intervening for us. Jesus coming on our behalf. Jesus facing God's wrath and punishment 
for us, suffering and dying in our place to set us free. And so Jesus' name is the key to escape. Escape the wrath and punishment of God and have life in his name. That's the key. But that's what a lot of people don't know or don't understand or don't believe. And they have to find that clue. As we hear that, I want to take you back to the escape room again. Now, the unique thing about escape rooms is you never go in there by yourself. You go in as a, a group, right? Now, as you go in as a group, would you think, as part of a group, I'm going to find the clue by myself, I'm going to escape by myself, and I don't care what happens to the rest of these clowns. <laughs> right? Is that the way it works? No, you're supposed to go in and work as a team. Working together to find your way out. We are part of a team. And that team is what? We confess it in the Nicene Creed. We confess it in the Apostles' Creed. When we confess the Nicene Creed this morning, we confess these words. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. What does that mean? That every believer in Jesus Christ is a member of that one holy Christian and apostolic church. Somewhere along the line, we got the idea, well, i got to be a Lutheran. That's the only way in. Well, you're going to be really surprised to get to heaven and find there's Baptists and Catholics and Methodists and Presbyterians. The fact is that every believer in Jesus Christ is part of that one holy Christian and apostolic church. But the thing is, that church is invisible, which means that we can't see faith. So we don't know who has it. We don't know who's going to have it. All we know is that when you're a believer, you're part of that church, and that's what saves you. So do we find the clue and say, forget the rest of you guys, I'm out of here? Or do we stay and show them the clues? Do we stay and speak the name of Jesus? Do we stay and help them find that good news, the escape word that leads to life? That's what God calls us to. See, that's the cause that we need to be committed to. And even though there's threats all around us, and even though there's dangers all around us, and that's why I chose the hymn we just sang, even though they're there, What can we trust in? Look at verse 20 again. O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. See, it's in God's hands. We can absolutely trust in Him to care for us, protect us, and inevitably have vengeance over those who would seek to do us harm because He's in control. All he calls us to is to the cause. The cause of telling others about Jesus. I'm not sure which branch of service is it, but they have a slogan. No man left behind. Why do they say that? Right. And that's what we need to think about as well. Every unbeliever that doesn't know Jesus is a man left behind. And we need to share his love. We need to share the escape word. Jesus is the word of life. Let's make it known. No matter what threers, uh, uh, fears or threats come upon us. In Jesus' name, amen.
The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all.